Hi everyone, this is Brittany Bond, and welcome back to the podcast. Ah, I invite you to take a deep breath with me. Hmm. And notice how you feel in your body right now. All sensations are welcomed, and I invite you to send love to whatever is coming up and coming through. On today's podcast, I am excited to share with you about, <laughs> um, Faraday made a podcast recently about different types of love that a lot of people talk about in spirituality. So it's soulmates, karmic relationships, twin flames, divine union. And I really enjoyed his podcast. It was really fun to listen to because a lot of his are in German and I don't speak German, not yet anyways. Um, so I'm excited to make one today and share my reflections because we were talking about it a lot and I was like, oh, I have so many things to say. And then he was like, why don't you make a podcast? And I'm like, I'm going to do that. So here we go. And one thing I want to say in the beginning is that we are like all of these things are labels to help us understand different types of connection. And if that information is helpful for you and it is something that is empowering for you, then, then let's dive right in. If this is something that doesn't resonate with you, then maybe it's not for you. It's okay. Like for me, relationships are the thing that I can talk all day about. Like I love the nuances, like all the little small details of how we emotionally connect to each other, spiritually, energetically, physically, like I just love the merging of souls in different ways. And talking about this stuff is so exciting for me. So on the one hand, I look at a connection when I when I meet someone new, I always ask myself like, well, first off, is this person something that is meant for me? Can I learn something from this connection? Are we meant to have something where one or both of us is learning something beautiful that we can grow our consciousness? If the, it's a no, then I just thank the person, you know, have a brief interaction and I move on. If it feels like a yes, then I flow with it. I don't, I don't label it. One, I don't like search to label it one of these things that I'm about to share with you. It's usually after <laughs> or very deep into a connection with someone where I start noticing the patterns and I start recognizing, oh, this is what that was. So a lot of times it kind of helps us to look at things retrospectively. And of course, I think because I understand these types of relationships, I <laughs> on purpose maybe don't need to go down certain paths because I already have many times, like for instance, a karmic relationship. And I just don't have so much that I need to work out anymore in, in this type of connection. So I just wanted to say that, like, you don't need to decide what it is before you go through it. Just like allow yourself to have a beautiful connection with someone as long as it's empowering and nourishing for both of you and you're growing your consciousness in a way that feels good in your body. And then afterwards, it's like, Oh, that's what that was. You know, like it's, it's for me, it's fun to analyze. I love analyzing relationships. So let's dive right in. The first one I want to talk about is a soulmate connection. So when you watch Disney movies, when like a lot of times when we were raised, like our cultural culture and our society is programming us from birth to believe that all types of love is leading you to a soulmate connection. <sighs> I'm just going to breathe that one out because it took me a very long time to release this. I feel that um, there's, I have so many things to say about this. Okay, so a soulmate connection is someone, it, this can be a romantic connection, this can be someone that you're friends with, this can be someone that is in your actual physical family. What makes a soulmate connection is someone who is on a spiritual level, it's someone who's part of your bigger soul family up in spirit. And they 
they come down and it's like you feel that you already know them before. You already feel familiar with this person because you probably have a lot of past lives with them in different ways. Like they might be your sister in a past life or a brother or your, your mom or your dad. And it's like as a soul family, a lot of times we come down and we play out different characters within each timeline in order to experience different aspects of our of ourselves within the soul family dynamic so this can also be a romantic partner because on the spiritual level it's all love <laughs> like it doesn't need to be someone who is your mom or you know what i mean like i'm trying to put this in physical words um on a spiritual level when you get to spirit it's all you're all one big family and when you come down here, you can choose to play the characters of mother, father, sister, brother, or you can choose, actually, in this timeline, I want to come down and be, I want to choose to be a romantic partner for you in this dynamic. And so this familiarity is what is the first thing that denotes that someone is a soulmate connection. You can have many soulmate connections. Um... And why I was saying earlier about like, this is what we're programmed to believe is that because for many of our lifetimes up until this very transformational age, um, we had so much karma. So this is like karma in my definition is us playing different sides of the victim perpetrator role in order to understand the polarity between the light and the darkness, in order to have the opportunity to integrate both sides of ourselves. We need to integrate both sides in order to release this dynamic of the victim perpetrator, which if you look in the world right now is really playing out hardcore, especially right now, because people are actively trying to wake up and release this dynamic. So for many millennia, when we're being reincarnating over and over again in different timelines, there was a lot of this victim perpetrator playing out all around us. This was kind of just the dynamic, especially in the dark ages of the world. And so when you found a soulmate connection, it's someone where you didn't have this with. It was someone where you were, you could just, you could just rest in the relationship and it felt very comfortable. There wasn't much fight. There isn't much fighting in a soulmate connection. It's like you just get each other and you can just, it's almost like your soul can rest. And in the past, when we were, we had a lot of karmic things that we were already actively playing out in the collective. And a lot of people weren't really ready to go deeper and integrate more fully, a soulmate connection was kind of like what you could aspire to. It was like, this is all we got. You know, like for most people where their consciousness level was at, that was like, if they could get that, then they were doing, that was their happy ever after, right? That was their Prince Charming, you know, princess or whatever. Um, and I will say that in my life, my first husband, my, my only, the only person I was married to, um, my ex-husband, we were married for six years and he was a soulmate connection. So from the, the first moment I met him, I felt like I already knew him and we were very comfortable with each other. Um, and we were still friends like all the way through. Our we were friends first. So something also with soulmate connections, it's, it's more of a friendship first and less of like, so when I'm talking about like, you can have this in a romantic partnership but the polarity, so polarity is like kind of the tension of like someone that's a little bit different or we have things that are opposing. So think of two magnets. They're like opposing each other, but then they're also like locking in together. So within a soulmate dynamic, there isn't as much tension, which for me, tension is also opportunity for growth. So you just kind of lock together and everything feels great, but you don't necessarily move beyond this like level of consciousness that you're at, at least with, within the partnership. You can, of course, be in a soulmate, a very happy soulmate connection within your relationship, your romantic relationship, and then grow your consciousness outside of the relationship. And that's beautiful. Like, I, I want to make sure that I'm not like knocking. I'm not saying that soulmate connections are less than. 
I just want to bring your awareness to the fact that our society programs us that this is actually what is the most healthy and in past vibrations that we are, were on as a collective that was that was the most healthy because it was safe like outside in the world nothing was safe and so if you could find a soulmate connection where you were just safe with each other then it was like you two fighting the world you know but now as we raise our vibration there's a lot more options of different types of connections and these are this is what i'm really excited to share with you so if you're in a soulmate connection right now it's great like celebrate it it's amazing it doesn't mean that you're you need to leave your partner and go find a different connection. I'm just saying that what I experienced like within my marriage was everything was amazing. We were, <laughs> I remember us going on a date. Like we were probably five years married at this point. We were going on a date. We would go on dates a lot and just like catch up. And, um, and the bartender or whoever, we were at a restaurant or something, and the bartender, or the waiter came over, and he was like, oh, is this your first date? Like, you guys are so cute together. And we were like, we've been married for five years. And they were like, wow, wow, I really hope, I remember the person saying, I hope I'm still this good of friends with my partner when after I've been married for five years. And I it was like locked into my psyche, because I was like, yeah, I guess we are this accomplishment and within our community people loved us as a partnership they loved us as a couple because we were happy we were we were friends like we actually supported each other like a soulmate connection is someone who they have your back they support you like whatever you're going through it's like you know it is you two against the world like you guys got each other's back and you're really there for each other some downsides of a soulmate connection is that sometimes when people, because of the programming that we were raised with, that we, <laughs> I, I believe that a lot of this um, soulmate programming that the collective has given us is also carries the connotation, it carries this belief that we are not complete within ourselves and that our soulmate will actually complete us. So as our own individual soul, we don't have everything within us and so we need to find this externally and then when two of us find each other as soulmates we complete each other so this is not something that i believe in i believe that each individual is complete within themselves unless they choose to believe they are not so this is what i find interesting is the collective is programming us from a very young age to believe that we are not complete within ourselves and that we actually need to find this externally Another way that you can find this externally is through um, is through them selling you things, is through, you know what I mean? Like, so this also can go in down a negative connotation because when you're not complete within yourself and you don't feel this and you don't believe that you are, then you're always going to be looking for external validation. So you're always going to be vulnerable to what the outside world is telling you is you're good enough or you're not good enough and all these things. I find that that is a that is one of the things I do not agree with about soulmate connections because I believe that each of us has the opportunity to go down our own spiritual awakening path and realize that we are complete within ourselves that we are have a very every one of us has a very strong connection to source and the more that we are in nature the more that we spend time with ourselves the more we get to know ourselves the more that we realize <laughs> that we have it all within ourselves. And then we can choose to be in connection with romantic and other connections out of a, a state of abundance. Um, so if, if, if you're in the soulmate connection and you believe that you're not complete and you believe this person completes you, what ends up happening is a lot of codependence, a lot of w leaning on the other person to fill your needs emotionally, physically, sexually, spiritually. And I find this to be a huge deficit, a huge like giving away your power to someone else, even if they didn't ask for it. And I noticed that I did this a lot in my marriage. Like uh, we would, yeah, it was just like he would handle certain things emotionally, physically, whatever, and I would handle other things. And then we just kind of were this, this team in the world and it worked great for a while and then I outgrew it I started to realize hey I'm actually complete within myself and I want my partner to 
add to my life and not that I need to, like I basically started to take care of myself in all ways. And I remember one time, such a fun, hold on one second. I invite you to take a deep breath while I blow my nose. Okay, I'm also gonna drink some water. We're just like nourishing our bodies today. I remember when I was stepping into my power in my marriage, I told my, my husband at the time, I am really excited to ask for a raise. I'm realizing that I'm not getting paid enough at my law firm. And I've been working there for three, almost four years. And he told me, um, you should just be okay with, you should just accept what they're giving you and just be happy that they're even allowing you to work there. Basically like don't ask for more. And I was like, I don't agree to this belief. Like I, I believe that I'm worth more and I believe that I do really good work and I know what the market value is for my job and I know that I'm getting underpaid. And when I real, so within that time period, we ended up, sep I asked for a separation within this time period and within two weeks, I got a new job because I wouldn't ask my, my employers at my law firm for a raise. They refused to give me a raise. I think they thought I was going to just accept it. And then within a week, I found a new job where they, I got a $20,000 raise. And for me at 23 years old, this was a really big deal. And I remember, uh, you know, my, again, even during separation, my, my ex-husband and I were still friends. And so we would go, we went out to dinner and I was really excited. I told him, I just got a $20,000 raise and I could see <laughs> the chickens outside are really loud. I could see the look in his eyes when he realized that, oh, I was outgrowing him because now I was making way more money than him and I had just asked for a separation and I could basically take care of myself in the world, like in a, in a lot of ways. I was like proving to myself and I was about to move to Costa Rica and work remotely, which was always my dream was to live in a foreign country and wake up and go surfing every day. So this was my journey out of soulmate connection and into the unknown. So I didn't really know what was out there. I just knew that I wanted to have a relationship where within the dynamic, I was constantly growing. And I was also with a partner who was excited and as driven as I was to also grow. So it didn't need to be necessarily with me, but like even externally, like they had a certain drive for growing their consciousness and up leveling themselves. And I wanted to be matched in this in a partner. And there was many other reasons why we split up. He ended up becoming an alcoholic. There was many things, but the main thing was that I, we outgrew each other. We were no longer, we got married. I got married when I was 18. They were, we were no longer the same people anymore. But I remember looking around at all of my friends who also, you know, within the religion I grew up in was very normal to get married really young. And everyone was just settled and just happy that they had found someone who also loved them like enough to, you know, have a life together. And I just remember looking around and being like, are y'all actually help happy? Like, are you just like, are you just settled? I don't know. Like, you know, this, this thing about like, oh, you might as well get with someone just so you're with someone. And I was like, I love myself. I actually love being alone more than if someone is not adding to my life in a positive way, I'd rather be alone. Um, so for me, I valued myself more than just being with some person that was like, okay enough to be with. And so that's one question I'll, I'll ask you, and this is something you have to ponder on your own, is like, do you feel complete within yourself? Do you feel that you are, do you believe that you are complete and that you are enough and that you love yourself and that you have your own connection to source and that you are fully guided and protected by the universe and whatever higher power that you believe in your higher self that everyone is watching out for you and they they want the best for you and if you're in that energy that is a state of abundance that is a state of completeness i believe that is a state of divine union within yourself so the term of divine union has been thrown around a lot in the last couple of years in the spiritual community 
and I'm going to talk about it later, but what I really want to talk about right now is divine union within yourself. So we have masculine and fem feminine energies, both everyone, doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman or non-binary, you have masculine and feminine energy within yourself. And in the spiritual community, we know that the right side, so I invite you right now to hold up your right hand. If you're watching this, it's going to be the opposite hand, but um, hold up your right hand and this an honor that the right side of your body is your masculine energy doesn't matter what body you are in everyone the right side of your body is your masculine energy and if you hold up your left hand the left side of your body is the feminine energy this is really interesting a little side tangent if you get hurt on the right side of your body is it is usually like for us that do energy and body work we usually ask the person if they get hurt like for instance i got in a scooter accident and it was only on the right side of my body and then i asked myself of course like because the moment in time i was giving so it was my masculine side the right side is your masculine side and i was giving a lot of energy externally in a way that was not in alignment with what I wanted to do. I was working for a job I didn't like. I was literally rushing to a work meeting on the island, listening to very loud rap music. I was very out of alignment <laughs> and I hit sand. It was the only time I ever was in an accident. And I hit sand going around a corner and I just completely scraped all of the right side of my body. So when, for me being very spiritually awake, I understood Oh, okay, I need to slow down and I need to really look at the energy that I'm giving externally because masculine side is what energy you're giving outward. If you get hurt on the left side of your body, this usually denotes this, there's some energy in your field that you are receiving. Feminine is more about receiving the energy that is not in alignment with you. So this could be people you're hanging out with, a work environment, a family situation, but your body is telling you. So your body really is your subconscious. I really believe our body is our higher selves speaking to us. If we're not listening and we're not doing enough meditation to get the downloads, it's going to start showing up physically in our bodies. So that's a little tangent. But if you are, and if you are in alignment within yourself, so if you have a balanced feminine side and a balanced masculine side each of us it doesn't matter what bodies we were born into we each have the opportunity to be balanced in our masculine and feminine energy so what does this mean just because i was born into a feminine body i very much have masculine energy that i share into the world so this can be in the form of externally doing things that i care about so being there for my community, organizing events, anything external, me putting energy out is me using my masculine energy. Masculine energy is also your boundaries. So a lot of people who are born in feminine female bodies, a lot of women in the timeline have underdeveloped masculine energy. So that means that their boundaries, them, their external energy that they share, like, hey, this is my boundary, do not cross my boundary. If you've ever seen me in these type of situations, you know that I have a very balanced masculine side where I, I will just tell someone to fuck off and it does not matter to me who they are if they cross my boundary. Righteous anger is someone crossing your boundary in a way that does not resonate with you and is out of alignment. And it is okay for you to use your masculine energy, even if you're in a female body or you're in a male body, to say, hey, this is crossing my boundary. Do not cross my boundaries. So I'll speak to the other side. There's a lot of men, people born in male bodies who have an underdeveloped feminine side. So feminine is the receptive energy that you are taking in. And it's also your connection to your source energy. And it's also your connection to your emotions. So a lot of men in the timeline, I notice they are very active in their masculine energy they're putting a lot of things out in the world they're accomplishing things in the 3d but in the feminine energy that's in their bodies they all have it everyone has masculine feminine feminine energy they are they could have i'll say in the positive they could allow themselves to connect to their emotions more there's a lot of programming that men have that they're not allowed to have any emotions unless it's happy 
or angry, but you don't want to get too angry as a man because you might hurt someone. So it's like this a lot of frozen, a lot of frozen emotions within the masculine body in today's world. And we need you to connect to your feminine side in your body. We women need you because in order for you to do that, you can also be there for us. Because when you cut off this part of yourself, you're actually cutting off your source connection because your body and your emotions and your source connection, they are all one th big thing. They're all connected. It's one fluid line. And so for both men and women and non-binary, for, for everyone, you have masculine and feminine energy in your body. When you are able to express your masculine in a balanced way, your energy going outward, when you're able to receive energy and, and understand the energy and the emotions that are flowing through your body, that's the feminine energy. When you're able to do both of these things, it doesn't matter what body you were born into, then you are able to be in divine union with yourself. This means that you are balanced. You are fully integrated in both energies and then you're able to go into the world and understand both men and women and understand everyone. Understand it doesn't matter what body you are interacting with because you have both balanced energy. So for me, I have a lot of women who are like confused that I understand men so well, but it's because I have a lot of masculine energy in me that I have integrated and I understand why men are the way they are. I understand how to support them. And, and for me, as a woman in a female body, I know that one of my big superpowers is helping men feel safe to feel their feelings, helping create a safe space for men to be able to slow down and receive what's happening in the environment and to be embodied, to receive and notice and honor the sensations that are happening in their bodies. Because when they do this, they're actually connecting themselves to their own source connection. And when they do this, they wake up and they understand what's going on in the timeline and they understand how best to show up for all of us, men, women included. I also have a lot of women who are very excited that I understand women because I am in a female body and I have fully integrated my female side. There's been many years where I actually wasn't integrated in my female side because I was trying so hard to work. I was trying so hard to make it, quote unquote, in a masculine dominated energy world. And so I was very in my corporate woman, you know, disconnecting from my emotions, disconnecting from the sensations in my body and just pushing through. And then I realized I do not want to be that anymore. I actually like to be very integrated into my feminine side and to be very soft. And for me, soft is powerful because I speak my truth and I do it in a soft way. And <laughs> Faraday can really let you know that when I don't do it in a soft way, it's very hurtful because I am fully integrated in my masculine feminine. So my masculine energy can really cut super deep even when I'm sharing my feminine emotions. So it's important, especially for those of us who are in divine union to realize, wow, this is really when you are in your full power. This is, this is fully in your power because you have both energies working through your body in a way that is, you know, fully lit up, fully like the energy is flowing. For me, it's, I imagine it to be it's like the most amount of energy going through your body that your body vessel can hold as a physical being. And I find this to be really exciting. And also it's kind of like you have to understand how to manage it. It's very easy. It's a very delicate thing to be in divine union with, your th with yourself, especially when you're interacting in the world where most people don't even understand this concept and most people are very out of alignment. And they're catching up. They're doing their best to catch up. And this is why I make videos like this because I find it to be for us who are on this journey, we actually want to learn these things. Really exciting to have someone talk about it. I know when I first started listening to videos like this, I was like, oh my God, they get it. It's so nice to have someone who gets it. And a lot of the things we intuitively, like a lot of the things that I am sharing with you, I have intuitively downloaded 
to myself through my meditation. It's like come to me from source. And, and then I started to recognize that the collective was starting to understand this. So this is like another beautiful thing is the collective consciousness is like ready for this. And so suddenly many of us are talking about it. And this is why you hear a lot of these videos popping up if you're searching for this stuff. So I want to go, that's soulmate connections. Again, it's totally fine to be in a soulmate connection. It's beautiful. You can grow your consciousness outside of a soulmate connection. I also find that it's really nice to be able to like just understand what they are. And so you can decide for yourself, you know. Um, the next one I want to talk about is a karmic connection. So a karmic connection uh, is usually what people think they're in when they say, I'm in a twin flame connection, but it's very volatile. It's very, you'll know it, you'll know it because you'll be constantly thrown off from your center. Um, and the reason why we are attracted to karmic connections is because when we're in this journey to this divine union with ourselves, we need to clear this karma that we have had in the past timeline. So remember what I said, my definition of karma is, is cycling through being a victim and the perpetrator. So the, the one who's abusing and being the one who's abused. I want to make a little cut in here when I'm talking about karma. I got very excited. I was very much channeling this podcast. So I realized that I didn't specifically share this properly, so at least in my definition. So karma for me is actually a universal law. It's what you put out is what you get back. So this can be positive energy, you get positive energy back. Negative energy, you get negative energy back. When I'm talking about karma in this podcast, I'm specifically talking about a lot of karma patterns, kar karmic patterns that I see in relationships. And those are what I'm talking about here about the perpetrator and the victim. And this is what we would consider this negative energy going out and negative energy coming back in this loop that just keeps playing out. And some people use this as a way to grow their consciousness. I do not find this to be uh, pleasant for me anymore, so I don't. Uh, but just to keep locking that in, that karma is what you put out is what you go back. So you can have tons of positive karma. This is what I experience in my everyday life through synchronicity all the time. Okay, let's jump, jump back into the episode. And this doesn't necessarily mean that you're actually physically playing this out, like you're actually abusing someone and hurting them. It just could be at an emotional level. It could be on a psych psych psychic level. And it can be something that has been played out for many timelines between you and this soul. And now you're finding each other again in this timeline. And you're like, oh, we still are playing this loop out. Do we want to try it one more time to see if we can heal it? And a lot of people, especially in this transformational age that we are in, are very much gravitating towards karmic connections because they realize that there is a huge amount of opportunity for healing if they're able to recognize what it is in the in within your when you're within the dynamic and then do their best to separate with love, heal whatever needs to heal and release themselves. Because the thing with karma is that it only exists when you believe that it exists. So when you realize I don't choose to be a victim anymore, I don't choose to be the one hurting someone anymore, the perpetrator or the abuser, I, I don't choose, I don't believe in this anymore, then you step out of karma loops. Like I actually do not in any way get into these loops anymore. I have freed myself from karma in this timeline, which <laughs> I will tell you, I couldn't say even a year ago, you know, like this has like been a very conscious journey over the last 10 years of me really looking at my shit and working through stuff. Um, so I'll share a relationship that I had that w was my last karmic relationship that really cleared a lot was the person it was the last major relationship I had before fair date and I dated this person for we were in each other's lives for two years and we dated for one year and ironically he officially asked me out on my birthday and then I officially broke up with him one year later on my birthday because for me I view my birthday as like the beginning of my cycle of like my new year um and anyway so within that dynamic 
there was many times where we would take psychedelics together and we would see each other in other lifetimes where we were brother and sister or like different types of connections that we were in in many, many, many lifetimes going all the way back to like Egyptian times. And at the time I was just, I felt I was so drawn to this person because I could feel that there was so much to heal and there was so much to be reflected. But the way that you know that it's a karmic relationship is that one, the person has a very hard time being happy for your growth. They actually want you to stay in this this victim perpetrator loop with them, this chaos loop, because a lot of times they don't know, they're not conscious of it and they don't know how to get out of it. And if you are also not conscious, then you're also playing into this and just like, let's stay in this loop because this is what we know is connection. And um, for me, I was like waking up to this while I was in the dynamic. And I just remember thinking, I because for me I'm always like happy for my partner I was always like wanting the best for them and I think on the surface he did but below the surface he was very much in the victimhood and he didn't know how to rise above it and so when he saw me rising up and I'm always constantly growing and becoming a better version of myself I feel like it made him feel jealous jealous and he wanted me to stay it's usually because they don't want you to leave the relationship because they realize subconsciously that when you grow outgrow them, the, you're, you're no longer going to want to play the game with them. And so they want to keep you down in this lower vibration of this loop, of this drama loop with them. And I didn't want to do that anymore. Um, and within the relationship, we had many, many things happen where, you know, his best friend died. We uh, had to organize her funeral and send her body back to Germany. It was very traumatic and then we also, like, he, he just, like, wouldn't hang out with any friends. He was very emotionally avoidant with, like, just people in general. So I was, like, taking care of him. And then I was also going through my stuff where I was realizing that, you know, I had a lot of insecurities around, like, we wanted to be open, but then he never actually wanted to be open, it, I just felt like it was bringing up a lot of this stuff I had around men feeling like they were owning my body and deciding what I was going to do with my body, which was very triggering for me. And it made me, f it, it was just putting me into the victim mode of like, hey, I love you and I want to honor our relationship, but I feel like a victim because I'm not able to express myself and I've been playing by our rules, but it's not working. And then we like made the most amount of money we were ever going to make in our lives not <laughs> let me take that back we made a lot the most amount of money we had ever made it in our lives up until that point and then after his friend died um he ended up making some very bad financial decisions with both of our money and ended up losing all of my savings and this all <laughs> happened within this year and um and I honor that I put myself in that situation, but then I allowed myself to become a victim because I let someone else manage my money. And even though it was someone that I loved and I trusted, obviously this wasn't a dynamic where it was actually safe to trust this person. So I could also have really allowed myself to go way more into victimhood. And I've just been like, this is a reason why I can't trust men. This is, you know, men are just not here for you and this and that. Um, and I'm sure there's many, many w things that he could say where I was not being nice to him or, you know, he was the victim. And this is what I mean by like both people in the situation are really not doing what they it's like not bringing out the best. It's bringing out all of the things that you can work on, but in the most destructive way possible. But because a lot of us have this feeling of I want to wake up, this is the spiciness that is attracting us is like. Yeah, that's going to be really painful, but on the other side of that, I'm going to know who I am. And what I want to say to you is that you can do that, and that's okay. And sometimes we have to look, we have to experience karmic relationships, but it doesn't need to happen in a way that is traumatizing for you and putting you more into victimhood and actually hurting you more. Like for me, I ended up being in a very bad financial situation. I yeah, I had a moment where I like disconnected from everyone. I was in a very deep depression for like six months. And then I really looked at my shit and I was like, 
I mean, I broke up with him because I said to him, this is not healthy. Like I choose to be with someone who actually has my best interests at heart and loves me and wants the best for me and is actively moving forward in a way that we are thriving together. We're not just surviving. And he was putting me in, I was allowing myself to be put in more and more survival situations the longer I was with him. And it was no longer acceptable for me. And so I broke up with him and I spent a lot, I spent about six months alone in my beach house with my dog, really processing this relationship and really coming to the point where I no longer wanted to be the perpetrator or the victim. I didn't want to hate him. I didn't want to make him a bad person or evil. And I also didn't want to, I chose not to believe that I was a victim. A lot of my friends wanted to, they wanted me to sue him and get money out of him. And I even went down that path for a little bit and then I retracted. I was like, actually, no, none of this feels like good energy. I just want to get away from this person. And I'm sure in his mind, he has his own version of reality of him being the victim and me like not being nice to him or whatever, whatever. Um, and for me, what I came to the conclusion is this was just a straight up hardcore karmic connection. And, you know, because on the surface, him and I are both nice people. We both care about our community. We built we built our community space together. That was a positive thing that happened out of our dynamic over the last four years. Um, but after that, it was it was all downhill from there. And I feel that we could have, on another timeline, stayed friends because we were friends for a whole year. We were even housemates in a villa here during lockdown for about six months before we dated. And when we were friends, we were able to reflect a lot of things to each other. Um, that was positive and not the damaging. So I'm bringing all this up for you that even if you meet a karmic relationship and you're like, wow, this person can reflect a lot to me. I can understand a lot about myself through this dynamic, even though this person is so opposite of me in a lot of ways. I really invite you to ask yourself, does this need to be a romantic relationship? Because when you start mixing sexual energy, things get very fucked up because your your whole body and your energy and everything wants to merge with this person. And if this is not a positive relationship in the end, you don't want your yourself, because this is the things that was getting me like very unclear and messy in my psyche, in my head, in my energy, was that this person was we were sleeping together and so it was like really I was trying to fix it and it wasn't able to be fixed um so yeah I want to um just bring that up for you that like karmic relationships don't need to be super painful in the way that I experience them I feel like I I, me Faraday and I joke that we're growth junkies like we really really love to grow as fast as we can um but I don't think it needs to be that painful. Um, so yeah, so that's a karmic relationship. And I want to talk about twin flames now because twin flames is something that many people feel, <laughs> uh, that they, they want their twin flame like this in, like in past generations, like your soulmate was what everyone wanted. Now it seems like in the spiritual community, everyone wants a twin flame. This is my twin flame. This is my twin flame. And again, I feel like these labels, if you're using them in a way that is empowering for you, great. If it is something that is locking you into a dynamic with someone that is not empowering and it's actually keeping you in a dysfunctional relationship longer, stop using the labels just analyze whether this is a healthy connection and whether you want to keep the connection and if it's not healthy then get out of that dynamic (laughs) get some space to get some perspective really look at things and if it's also that maybe it's a healthy dynamic but you're going too fast then slow down and really make sure that you are staying in your power because this is the thing with twin flame dynamics is that for me, it's like when you come into divine union with yourself and you're suddenly realizing that you would like to partner with someone else who's also in divine union with themselves so they feel complete in themselves. This is when your vibration is setting off. It's like this little blinking light in the universe. I am ready for a twin flame connection. And I actually believe that you can have many different, many different people can be a twin flame connection. It's not that 
this is the one and this is the only one. I think that they are very, very rare because one, there's only, there's very few of us are actually complete in ourselves and in divine union with ourselves. So this is getting more and more in the timeline as people are waking up and that's really exciting. And also a twin flame is someone who actually is part of your oversoul. So to talk about this, it's like in, in order to understand this, like on a soul level, you have like your soul family. So these are people who are other souls, but they have a, it's like your tribe up in spirit. Like this is your community. These are your people. And that's why I was saying like, this can be your soulmates. They can come down in different types and like can be your brother, your sister, your mom, and then your lover, like in different timelines they can show up. But these are people who are not part of your individual soul. They are, but they're in your tribe. A twin flame connection is someone on a higher level because our soul is this eternal thing that is so much more massive than we can even conceptualize in our physical mind. And only a small part of your soul is being projected into this timeline because your body can only hold a very finite amount of energy. So your soul is actually way bigger than, than what you can hold in this body. And so a twin flame is actually part of your same soul. It has the same vibrational essence, the same core vibration. And a lot of times our, our twin flames are people who are in our same soul. They stay in spirit to help us and guide us in the timeline. So they don't actually physicalize. They don't choose to be born into the timeline. But right now, as we're in the transformational age and it's a very juicy time, a lot of people, are, a lot of souls are choosing to be born and to show up at the same time as their twin flame. There's also another major spiritual reason for this. It's because when two twin flames come together and they have gone through their integrative work and they have become in divine union with themselves, they have the opportunity to have divine union with another soul that is themselves. And this is so exciting and this is why so i've been reading the mary magdalene um manuscript which is channeled and it's talking about um like jesus and mary magdalene um and how they were actually in divine union with each other and they were actually lovers and she was part of, there's a whole story behind this that i find really fascinating and what i see a lot and i've seen this on dmt trips and ayahuasca experiences is that in order for us to really complete the cycle and release this karmic loop that we have of victim perpetrator and really step into these intergalactic beings of something that is so much bigger than what we are is we have to integrate this darkness and this light. And when you do this within yourself, that's beautiful. And that is a huge accomplishment. And there's not many people that are that in the timeline right now even even as I say that there's a lot more coming but there is not many because it's fucking hard <laughs> and it takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of being able to really own your stuff and be okay with who you are and and to accept yourself honor your experiences integrate and like show up as your complete self in service to the collective so that's divine union with yourself there's this because we are born in the three third dimensional energy, I'm trying to put this in really simple words. It's like, come into spirit with me. It's a lot easier. Um, because we are born in a third dimensional reality, we have the polarity of masculine and feminine. And our souls, in order to have this more ascended, it's like the next level of ascension, the next level of growth, is that you, so you're in divine union with yourself, and then you choose another soul to be in divine union externally. And this soul on a twin flame level is actually part of your bigger soul, but when you come down into the timeline, it's like they have had their own experiences, they forgot who you were, and then you remember together as you come into union with each other. If you are able to go through these, this last hardcore round of reflections, it's like the final round of full integration because there's only so much integration you can mirror to yourself. Um, this is why they say like relationships are our biggest reflections and our biggest opportunities for growth because there's so many blind spots that we have. So when you come into divine union with yourself, you're setting off this frequency, I'm ready for a divine union with my twin flame that person shows up in your life 
and then they reflect hardcore all your blind spots, all the things that you thought you had integrated, but you actually hadn't. And then you have this opportunity to run away, which a lot of people do. This is what you see online. And when you Google twin flames is I was in union with them and they kept running away. And it's usually because for one person, usually this plays out in the emotional attachment. The anxious attachment is the one who's like latching on. The avoidant is the one who's running away. And this is usually people's way of handling this is just like the energy is so strong. Like when Ferdy and I got together, I would consider him a twin flame of mine. We felt like we were on psychedelics all the time. We literally felt like we were tripping and there would be so much synchronicity. People like to talk about synchronicity. I've had, I have a very, I'm very in tune. For me, synchronicity is being in alignment with your higher self. Your higher self is giving you like, you know, little, little tips in the 3D of confirmation, like that things are lining up, that you're on path, da, da, da. When you're in a twin flame connection, the synchronicity is so out of this world that you realize that this is not of this world. I, I'm trying to think of, there's just, it's, it's funny, it's like blocking me from sharing stories about this. There's just so many times where we have had such strong synchronicity of things that only him and I will understand. And we like look at each other across the room when the event happens and we're just like, what the fuck? And it's just this such a deep level of connection on a soul level of understanding who we are in the timeline, what our mission is for the collective, the fact that we are here fully integrated, ready for the mission. And then things start happening externally and we're like, yep, I understand. We, I know what I need to do. Like, da, 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 this thing and that thing. And it's really beautiful. And also at the same time, I feel like Faraday and I, um, we were so excited to find each other. This is another thing with Twin Flames is that it's very important to go slow. Like when I found, when Faraday and I found each other, I c one thing I knew, I knew who he was. I saw him. Like I can see, th I'm very psychic and I could see who he was um, about six months before he realized it. And I waited because I was like, I will only w be in divine union with a twin flame who's fully awake. Like he can see me too. Like I'm not going to push myself on anyone. This is also being in the feminine. Like I'm here to receive this. And he did wake up to this and recognize it. And then we once we both realized it we were both conscious of it it was like we just wanted to spend all day long with each other every day and um and i, th and I think at both mo at some moments both of us were like ah this is a little intense this is too much but then we just kept we just kept wanting these reflections we kept wanting we loved each other we found each other we'd waited so long like 30 years to find each other and we were just so excited to be in union with each other and at the same time, both of us, <laughs> it's like the, the things that each of us needed to, work, needed to work on, the other one had already worked through. So we completed each other in this sense of our reflections. And, <laughs> and it was like the way that we shared these reflections was the other person found very triggering. I'll just say that like that. Like it's one thing for you to understand hey, I worked through this thing and it's another thing to see it in another person and then they, it's like the one thing that they haven't worked through and you're like, this is so easy. Why don't you just work through it like this? Don't you get it? And then they're like, ah, one, I feel seen and two, I feel like you're not being nice to me. And from an astrological level, like Faraday has his moon in Aquarius and he's rising Scorpio. My moon is in Scorpio rising Aquarius. This is what I mean by we're literally the opposites. And both of our Pluto is in Scorpio. We have a lot of Scorpio and Aquarius energy. And a lot of our charts is literally introverted. And so in some ways, this is really great because we fully understand each other, but we come from opposite ends to get to the same place. So on the spectrum of understanding the collective, it's like we understand everyone because I understand one half of the collective and he understands the other half and we like merge this together and then we're this amazing super team, right? But when we were reflecting these to each other, it was sometimes, a lot of times, very painful because I would be speaking so bluntly to him 
that it would hurt him and he would shut down or he would be speaking so bluntly to me that it would hurt me and shut down. So I just invite you to have a lot of softness with your twin flame, give them a lot of space, like understand that you're always connected and it's probably better to go really, really slow so that you don't scare each other away or the energy because it's literally like when you're in divine union with yourself, you're holding the most amount of energy that you can hold in one body coming in through the timeline in that moment. When you're in divine union with another like soul who is twin, f your twin flame, the energy that you're pulling through is like exponential. It is like, it's like you times a million. <laughs> and sometimes this can feel like Faraday night, even, you know, yesterday we were have, we have moments where we're like, we miss like a whole day. Like we're like, what happened to Thursday? You know, or just like, something will happen and we're just like both like I feel so high in spirit right now do you and like yes oh my god I feel like I'm on MDMA and I understand every and we'll just have these moments where we're just going through these like energy vortexes together and it is so intense that really we spend a lot of our life right now just doing uh, permission slips to stay grounded which is really beautiful because then we're able to allow this energy to come through our vessels and through our vortex and through our house, our house, we consider a temple. If you've ever been here for an event, you'll like, you'll understand it's, it is a lot of energy coming through this space and we do our energy work in order to hold that energy. Why I was bringing up the Jesus and Mary Magdalene thing is that I feel that the, in the collective right now, like, there's a consciousness that is a higher vibration that is br is like guiding the way to show the collective that we can be in union with ourselves, each other, nature, our higher selves, like just complete unity, right? And this is displayed in one aspect between a divine union between two twin flames. This does not mean that there is one. A lot of times people, they receive this download and they think, I am the reincarnated Jesus and Mary Magdalene. And this is when you make a cult, right? I've really, I grew up in a cult. I don't want to make a cult. I'm not going to. So what I'm trying to tell you is that I feel that there are many types of these divine union connect connections. And this is an energy. This is a consciousness. And if you're able to harness this energy in a way that is empowering the collective for them to recognize that they are a sovereign being, that they have their own connection to source, then you are using it for something that it is meant to, which is to be an example, um, a, it's like this beacon of light and this guiding. I remember in a lot of my meditations recently, I just keep being this down though, like you need to guide them home. And for me, home is our connection to source us in union with ourselves and our connection to source. And so for me, these podcasts that I make and all the work that I do in the world is guiding the collective home. And the more that we are able to be guided home, the more that we are home, we automatically are on this vibration that is, you know, what we call the new earth vibration. And it is, it is this unity with ourselves. And then you, when you're in divine union with yourself, you, you see the unity with everyone around you and the collective and nature and you naturally shift yourself to a reality that is reflecting that unity. So we don't need to do so much fighting what is currently happening. We need to do a lot of inner work in order to get ourselves on a vibration into this unity so that our external reality reflects that. Whatever is like they say in a lot of spirituality, like as below, as below, as above, so below. It's basically like whatever is in spirit is reflected here. Whatever is internally is reflected externally. It's like this game that we're playing with our reality because we actually are choosing our reality through our vibration and through what we choose to focus our energy on. Low on a little tangent there, but, um, what I'm trying to say is that everyone has this opportunity to be in divine union with themselves and to create a connection and call in like, you know, it's, it, it is, I, I, 
I'm very sensitive about saying manifesting these days because I feel like, again, this, these words have started to be used in the spiritual community to the point where they don't mean anything anymore. But basically, when you're on a vibration where you're actually in unity with yourself and you love yourself and you feel complete, it is only natural that you're going to attract in people on a similar vibration. So you don't need to do any work to manifest this. You can ask your higher self, yes, I choose this. I choose the timeline where I meet my twin flame and I choose to be in divine union with them. That's all you really need to do. You don't need to like, like I feel like a lot of people are like, you need to manifest. It's basically, you just need to be in this knowingness because when the knowingness, when you're in this belief and this complete knowingness, the only thing that will happen, the only natural reaction to that is your reality is going to reflect this. So you just need to stay in that knowingness. I feel like a lot of this manifesting stuff that has come up recently is, is people just trying to help you stay in this knowingness. But if you can just stay there and be in the belief and be connected to your source and be in divine union with yourself, it will just naturally happen. And I will say that for these six months when before, like I thought it, I, I knew that it was for a day, like in some deeper level, but my conscious reality was choosing to not have any expectations and so I just meditated a lot I, I spent a lot of time alone in nature and connecting to source and I remember telling myself him or someone more divinely suited for me because I know my standard I know my vibration and I know who I deserve so him or someone better basically more more divinely connected and he stepped into the timeline in a way where it was so beautiful and I'm so grateful for our connection and I will say that twin flames, if you're able to really integrate yourself and like come into this, it's also, it's also another way to release this karmic pattern of victim perpetrator. Cause I noticed this even the last time Faraday and I had a disconnection, I was like, wow, I really want to make him, I really want to be a victim right now. And he really wants to be a victim right now. We both think the other person is trying to hurt us. And I was like, wow, I don't, I don't resonate with this anymore. And I really called it out. And we had an amazing conversation and we actually both were like crying and very heart open. And I feel that even within myself, there's this new Brittany that's coming out that is like, I really just release all of this perpetrator victimhood stuff. Like I, I know that Faraday has my best interests at heart and I, and he knows that I have his best interests at heart. We love each other so much on such a core level that it's staying in that knowingness and then you are able to be on the frequency where everything reflects that knowingness. Wow, I just said a lot. <laughs> I hope that this is helpful for you. Um, and I think I covered everything. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Um, I want to share, I'm, I invited you in the last podcast to start sending me gratefulness things that you are celebrating, um, especially around creating space for your pleasure and your connection to yourself and each other and the earth. And I really am excited to celebrate um, that I, um, I've been like sleeping a lot recently and allowing myself to rest in a way where I don't judge how much I sleep. And because in the past I would be like, oh, I should wake up. I should like, I should be making a podcast or no, I should be doing something for the collective. And it's like, maybe my body just needs to rest. Maybe that's, maybe that's the best way I can show up for the collective right now. And yesterday I made a podcast and I uh, did a bunch of human design readings for lovely souls of you online. I love doing them. You can always reach out to me if you want more information about those. And immediately after I finished the last reading, I asked my um, massage Thai mama if she's available to come over. And she came over to my house and gave me the most amazing t massage for an hour. And then I went to the sauna with one of my best friends, was in the sauna and the ice bath. And I just felt so melty at the end of it. I was like so in my body and so loving life. And I'm just really celebrating the taking care of myself while I'm also showing up for the collective. Because in the past, I, it's very easy for me to get excited and wanting to do all the things and then not realize, oh, I need to take care of myself. And it's really these moments like in between all the other things, if I can create space to drop into my body, <sighs> then I keep feeling good, you know? 
Um, and I ha- keep having the resources to help everyone. So just celebrating that. And I hope that encourages you and invites you to also put yourself out there in the sense of creating space for yourself to feel connected, to ground into your body and to feel pleasure in whatever way that means for you. So I'm sending you all lots of love and I hope you have an amazing day. Bye.